Good afternoon and welcome all. Uh, I hope everyone is enjoying the, the second half of the last day here at the API Days Live in New York. And I welcome you all to the session on Software AG Web Methods Integration and API Suite. Over the next 50 minutes uh, or so, my goal is going to be to talk a little bit about how you can achieve your goals and how we can access data that's in um, silos locked, whether it's on-premise or in the cloud, take that data, turn it into APIs, make those APIs secure and available, promote and advertise those APIs both inside and outside of your organization, and then finally make sure that we are prepared as we move forward into whatever new changes come along in the next two to five years. So first, I just want to put this slide up. I'm sure it's being people that have been involved with the conference over the last day and a half. You guys all know why we're here and why APIs are important. This type of information really just focuses on the fact that APIs are where we've been moving for the last several years and where we're moving in the future. The goal really being, okay, so what are we going to do today during this session? My goal is to not only touch very lightly on what the solution is that Software AG and Web Methods provides across all of their APIs, but also to, to share with you what I've seen while talking with my customers and where I see the important things to be doing now while also positioning yourself for the future. We all know the APIs are important. APIs give you access to data. APIs allow you to start to have the information move it across. And as I'm sure you've seen in many of the other presentations, as you get all of this information and you start to expand your use of APIs from a single API that might be a point to point to making a much more holistic view, you start to see that you really need management across all of these APIs to really achieve the goals that you're looking for. These goals typically are going to be speed to market, being able to quickly access things, security so that you can get the correct amount of access to the correct people from the information that you're looking to do. And eventually, having the ability to do some sort of profitability or scalability on it so that you can achieve those goals. What you typically see is the main things that people are looking to obtain from an API management solution. The main goal at the end of the day is to create some sort of business value. And that the way you create this business value also has to manage the other main topics. You need to be able to get to your business data securely. You cannot be opening up holes. You need to make sure that private and public information is being secured. You need to make sure that things are being done so that access is not allowed to people that should not have it. Once you've created those particular APIs, you need to be able to create some sort of excitement. You need to be able to promote and advertise your APIs so that users, both internal to your organization as well as external, external to your organization, can find your APIs and quickly and easily start to use them. As they are being used, you need to be able to make sure that you are monitoring those APIs, making sure that you're analyzing how they're being used, where they're being used, optimize the performance, continue to improve them as requests for more types of data and things come along. And then finally having some governance along the way so that as you are going out and creating new APIs, you have a solution where people can come and see, oh, I have some existing APIs in this space. I don't want to remake them because I don't want to remake them. I need to have some sort of governance board to make sure that when a new API request comes along, I can validate it and go through it. From that perspective, the software AG suite really falls into six main categories, which I'll be touching a little bit on today, but then also exposing some of the things outside of the API management platform that are really going to help you to achieve your main goal. The API gateway, this is your runtime area. This is where you're doing all of your security. This is where you're going to be monitoring and analyzing your data, alerting when problems are occurring, putting policies around it and managing it. Once you've done that, then you're gonna have the API portal. This is your developer portal where developers, both internal and external your organization are gonna come and find out what APIs you have they're going to register for those APIs. They're going to try them out. They're going to leverage them and use them. A micro gateway, which we'll be talking about as, as we're really discussing making sure that you future, future proof your API platform, is taking that API gateway and making it available to put out into very small containers, use with microservices, et cetera, in that architecture. At mesh, which is another 
evolution of the micro gateway where we're taking our micro gateway and pushing it into existing service meshes to really bring more business context and application context to your microservices. And then Centrosite, which is also sometimes referred to as the API catalog, this is where you're gonna be doing all of your asset management, your metadata, being able to manage the APIs it goes from requested development, development test, et cetera. And then the final piece that really ties in with the API portal is the engage platform where I can take and push things out for brand new APIs. So if I have some new APIs that are out there, I may want to have some um, events where people can come in and you know, give prizes for the best use of a new API to be able to really launch it, to have um, different code reviews and things of that at the API. This is in general the Web Methods API management platform. But as I said, I wanna really focus today on the things that I see, which are the three main areas that are effective on getting you to having an API solution that is getting the data you need, making sure it's being provided in a secure way, and then making sure that those APIs are being used. And then looking at the two things that I would call, what is you need to be looking at for the future? So in this concept, the first thing we have to do is be able to get to the data. This data is typically locked in systems of record. Whether these systems are record or old school mainframes and ERP systems that are on premise, applications that are slowly moving to private clouds in AWS, Azure, or Google, or the systems of record that are being brand new, maybe being lifted, shifted into a public cloud, SAP HANA, et cetera. The first goal is really to have a way to access that data because once you have that data, then you can leverage that data as you need. But if you cannot get secure access to that data, the rest of it is useless. Once you have secure data, once you have access to that data, I then need to be able to expose that as an API, take that API, put it in a central location where I can run all of my APIs and put common policies and governance around that. We'll delve into a little bit more what that means. But really the goal is I need access to the data. I need a centralized place where everyone can access that, access that data. And then once I've accomplished that, I need to be able to have a location, an API portal, where I'm promoting and advertising my APIs so that both internal users and possibly external users can come find those APIs, request access, try them out, and get help while they are um, creating projects and using those APIs. And then in the future, the two things that I've noticed that most of the customers I work with are really looking at being prepared for is API monetization and then the next big thing. The next big thing is typically going to be looked at as microservices, Dockers, containers, app mesh, service mesh, all of that. And then being prepared for API monetization. All of our customers have lots and lots of data, and that data resides in different systems. Being able to have access to that data and then being prepared with the abilities behind the scenes so that when they have customers coming to them and saying, hey, I'm willing to pay for this level of information or that being able to be able to do that and be ready for API monetization is the next big step. So the first along this is really, as I mentioned, is gonna be how do I access those systems of record? One of the things you typically see if you're out looking about information is that a lot of analysts and people will say that 70 or 80% of all business data is still stuck in mainframes. Why is that important? A lot of business critical data is still in old systems of record that need to have integration layers to be able to access that data. If you cannot access those legacy systems, if you cannot access those cloud-based SaaS applications or anything else, you cannot leverage that information. So for me and what I see with customers is the first level of really being an API provider and having a true API environment is having an integration layer that allows me to access any of those different environments, whether they're on-prem or in the cloud and expose that data in API formats such as REST or SOAP or OData or WebSockets, et cetera. So the first bit is really coming in and saying, how do I manage that? And what Software AG provides is a single solution that allows you to communicate to all of the different SaaS applications, to all of the on-premise applications through um, old school adapters to systems like SAP, Oracle Apps, mainframes, 
really allows you to have that single method for being able to go in, access that information, and then with a single button, expose all of that out as an API. And that really then brings us to the concept of the different types of APIs that you need to be able to expose and having either an integration layer or an API layer that really talks to those systems and pulls it off. As I mentioned before, this is going to be all the way from having legacy applications that need to be communicated to by mainframe adapters and, um, you know, SAP Jayco, JARS, being able to communicate to those different backend systems, expose that data out at the same level as being able to communicate to a Salesforce in the cloud that is using already, you know, brand new APIs, being able to take those APIs and the backend APIs, bring them into a, a single central location where they can all be leveraged and used accordingly. Really the keys to success around this integration layer is the ability to access all of the business critical data, no matter where it is, to be able to support API standards, old school ones such as programmatic APIs, as I mentioned, SAP Jayco jars, anything to communicate, you know, whether it's COBOL or anything to different mainframe systems, backend data, also all the way to the current and ever forming new standards around the rest and OData and sockets and open API, et cetera. The second part is really being citizen developer focused. And I'll touch a little bit on this later as I talk about the full suite of web methods products, but you want this to be something that is very simple for your, your users to have ramp up time for. You don't want to have people have to spend months in learning this and have deep code. You want people to be able to come in with a low code environment, understand what is an existing, quickly pull things together. And then the final piece is having one solution that does all of that. So you've got your low code citizen developer, you've got your support for API standards and your ability to communicate to any system wherever it is. So now that we've really exposed that data, the next piece is really going to be, I want to take those APIs. I want to bring them all into a central location. I want to put some common security models around it. I want to be able to monitor and alert as things occur. I want to make sure that all of that is being done. So the next step really is going to be what we call an API gateway. So we now take all of those APIs, whether they're built in REST, whether they're built in SOAP, whether they're OData, whether they're WebSockets, whatever the API happens to be, and we import those into an API gateway. Inside of this gateway, you'll see on the screen here, and I'm gonna do a quick demonstration very quickly to show you. Once that API comes out, I can put policies around how those APIs are accessed. I can be very specific to an individual API. I can create generic policies that go across all APIs. This allows me to come in and put the security around the systems. So if we're talking about an API that I've gone in and I've exposed a backend mainframe service to get some customer data and that customer data uh, might be a billing or a usage rate, and I wanna provide that out. But I need to make sure that that information is being accessed very securely. I may wanna do caching on that data so that I can limit how often that's being called so that I'm not uh, ramping up the usage on my backend systems. I might wanna put in some load balancing across multiple backends. All of that can be done through the governance. And the other big part of this, and there are some other things I will touch on, but the other main part is not only do I wanna put security on to make sure things are being accessed correctly, but I also need to be able to analyze and optimize. Analyze first and foremost, so if there is a problem, I'm getting alerted that my APIs are not working correctly, whether it's an SNMP trap, an email, um, communicating directly out to ServiceNow to open up a ticket and a SaaS application, all of those things are available. I can also look at API usage, see the different trends and how they're coming. Maybe I see an API all of a sudden has been spiked in usage. I might need to, to bring it up. Might need to spin up a couple more containers with it on it. I might need to move it to a different level of service, whatever that happens to be. And with this, what I wanna do is just jump out real quick and give you a quick demonstration of our product. What I am logging into now is the Software AG Cloud, and you're going to see that this is what I was really talking about when I mentioned that single shop for everything. Right now, we have the API Gateway, the API Portal, our B2B Trading Partner Management, our IPaaS integration, our IoT solution, as well as um, our cloud containers, all in one location with all of the hooks pre-built. 
So if I was using this, I can come in, leverage all of these. If I need to publish something from the gateway to the portal, if I need to pull something in from my integration layer into the gateway, all of that is one click, all of the pieces are done. We will be adding messaging as well as managed file transfer um, in Q4 of this year to this um, cloud. But for right now, what I wanna do is just jump in and show you what the API gateway looks like. Once I'm in the gateway, I can come and just click on create API and pull in any of those APIs that I created in the first step. For right now, I'm just gonna come in and show you all the things we have currently. Once I brought in an API, it's gonna pull all the information out for me. I can come in and look at all the different resources and methods. If I'm doing um, swagger first or definition first type of um, development, I can come in and do API mocking. I can set up all of the tests so that people will be able to come in and do their uh, validation that they can communicate, have a, a mocked response set up so that while I'm still building the backend system, all of the testing can be done. And then once the mocking is done, I just turn, once the, um, the development is complete, I can just turn mocking off and I'll be ready to go. You see that I have a lot of resources and methods. So when I'm talking about policies, one of the key important things is going to be, can I break this up and be very, very specific on how I put policies around certain areas? So I can come in and create a scope that is very specific to either an individual resource or even an individual method on a resource and then I can build my policies around it. So you'll see in here, I've got that different scope. If I come in and create it for just that scope, I can put a policy around specifically that. In our policies, you'll notice that it's very simple. I've got the calling application or the uh, requester over here. I'm gonna come through my high level threat protection where I got all of the different um, high level threats that I wanna be able to avoid. Um, denial of service, SQL injection, et cetera. Once then, we're going to step by step to make sure that not only is the call coming through the correct call, but it is the right person doing identi identity authorization, access, making sure that I'm validating that this is the correct call, validating all the formats. So I may come in and say, okay, if I wanted to add an identity and access, I can come in and say, how do I want to validate this? I want it to be particular different things. I want it to be API keys, host names, HTTP basic auth, Kerberos, OAuth 2, any of the different formats for being able to identify who it is. I can also allow anonymous. So if I wanted to allow something to come in and do that, make the call as a anonymous person, but I wanted to capture consumers if they were providing the information can also be done. Very important is the request and response processing being able to do transformation on both the request as it goes in as the response as it comes back really allows me to create that layer of abstraction from the backend system that I know all of the API people want to be able to build. You've got a CRM system on-premise today that you're exposing out through APIs. Maybe that CRM system is going to move to Salesforce in the future, but you don't want to have to go to all of your requesters and change all of your APIs. You can just come in, change the routing to the new location, possibly use some uh, request transformation to change state formats or whatever else needs to be changed and continue to use it. The one last really big thing from a perspective around the policies is the, the traffic monitoring area where there's two things we're going to be talking about here. One is service result caching. Uh, caching is extremely important for two reasons. One, caching will allow you to improve the performance of any of your API calls. In this day and age, as APIs are now more and more, some are on-prem, some are in the cloud, hybrid is the way we're, we're all gonna be living for probably the next five to 10 years, if not longer. Being able to have results caching is going to improve the performance of any API call. And then secondarily, it's also going to help you reduce the amount of access you have to different backend systems or systems of record. As I mentioned before, there's you know statements that approximately 70 or 80% of data still lives on a mainframe. Well, mainframes still tend to charge by MIPS. So if I want to expose some of that data that's on a mainframe and I want to expose it out, or I want to expose information from a, a backend system that's very slow running, if I can cache that response and use that response for a certain amount of time, I will reduce the amount of times I'm hitting that backend system. As we move into the, the cloud world, depending on how your 
uh, cloud agreement is you may be charged every time you access or a certain number of calls. You can reduce that by using caching. So you've got the performance as well as the reduction in usage. And then the other one really is throttling traffic optimization. We're going to talk a little bit later about how um, API monetization is something that is being used in select areas today and is going to continue to, to grow over the next several years. The, the traffic optimization or throttling or quotas is how you refer to it. This is how you're really going to look at how all of that is set up. So I can go and say for a particular consumer or a particular group of consumers, they're allowed to leverage a particular API 10 times a day, 100 times an hour, et cetera. And that will really help you to kind of set that up. One of the other two main things that you really want to be able to, to be able to do or, or, or look at is really going to be the concept of mashups. What mashups are is a very simple ability where if I have multiple APIs inside of the gateway, I want to be able to take those APIs and do some very simple orchestration. So you'll see here, I have a a Salesforce query and a, a sales, or excuse me, a Salesforce login and a Salesforce uh, data query API. Instead of having to, instead of pushing these out as two separate APIs and having someone make a call in and they're going to set up and say, oh, okay, I get the, I make this call out, I get the response, I put the header token in, push everything in. What I can do is just very simply come in and say, as long as I provide the information to the first step correctly, Based on the response, I can just pass in the bearer token, pass in the account name, and I can expose this out as a single API, really helping to um, simplify the access if you're going specifically from an API perspective. You can also do a lot of integration with Salesforce through um, uh, iPaaS solutions and other uh, REST applications that will bypass this for you as well. The final two pieces are the concept of packages and then the concept of showing you some of the analytics. First and foremost, the packages are going to be things that you want to be able to look at and set up for multiple APIs. As you expose out more and more APIs, you're going to take these APIs and these packages you created, you're going to publish them out to your API portal, and then people are going to come in and request access to the APIs as a group. So they don't have to come in and ask, and ask for four or five separate APIs. They come in, make a single request for multiple APIs and get access to that whole package at once. And then finally, being able to come and look at analytics and trends. And see all of the different information as it comes across. So I, I can see all of the different applications, different API calls. I can see it all the way down to the level of what resources and what verbs were used. I can validate, I can look at the different trends, really allows me to come in and make sure everything's going well, as well as to get alerted anytime there is a problem. So that is the API gateway. Once you've got the APIs exposed using the integration layer, you've taken those APIs you've exposed plus any other API that you've gotten from any of your package applications, your uh, trading partners, third parties, you bring all those into the central location as the gateway. You put all the policies you need around it. Now you've got a list of APIs that can be used. The goal next really being, once I've got that, I now need to Okay, for that. So now that you've got all these APIs, how are you going to let people know where they are and how they are going to be used? This is really where the API portal comes in. The concept being it, I need a location that gives me information and allows me to show this across multiple areas. In this day and age, especially with COVID, you don't 
not all of the developers, even inside of an individual organization, are sitting next to each other. They can't look over their shoulder or go to the cubicle next door and say, hey, um, didn't you build an API that's going to do something like such and such that I need? Also, not only that, but APIs are now being shared outside of your own organization. So having an API portal that allows me to be able to sit there, create a very professional advertisement, have a single location that's going to let me come in, see all of the information I need, get help with actually doing the initial development, test the API out to make sure that it's what I'm looking for, request access tokens, download client SDKs, rate it, ask for new information, ask for help. So inside of this, this is a developer portal where I can log in and do simple searches and browses for APIs. Inside of this, there is a Facebook or a Twitter or a LinkedIn-like um, news feed for every single API where I can go in and request help. If I am building a new API, or excuse me, if I am leveraging an API and I'm having problems as I go to implement it, I can come out, make a request. If I've already implemented the API, but I really could use another two or three pieces of information, I can come and make a request to um, for added capabilities or added functionality to that API. There are um, also lists and feeds that are not specific to API. So there could be a one where I can go and request a new API in general. Really allows you to have that location where both internal and external users can come together share information, find what they're looking for, help to be successful, especially in the day and age where you aren't going to have that direct access to everyone where it's going to be. Second part is you don't have to have that API portal look like what we provide you. It is fully and completely customizable. You'll see here a couple of the um, customers that we have today whose API portals are accessible to the public. And I will show you one of those here in a minute. And then quickly just jump over to the API portal. So I'm gonna come over, go to my API portal. From here, I can go and look at the very simple and generic API gallery. I will show you what a customized one looks like in a second. But in here, you'll see I've got tags, I've got hybrid APIs, I've got REST APIs, I've got SOAP APIs. I can view by maturity status. I can view by whether it's in um, a particular business unit. I can do simple browses to say I want to look at one that's API. I jump into the one that's API keys. This is the, the screenshot you saw in the actual presentation. All of the information I need is here. Do I wanna look at the resources and see, okay, this has just a simple single resource, the different documents available, the API policies. So what policies are being done at runtime? You'll see this is requiring an API key check. And because it's requiring an API key check, if I come over here, you'll see I can request an access token. I can follow the API, I can export it. I can download client SDKs. I can come over and try the API out. Everything in one location where I can follow and press information. As I mentioned before, also has the list where I'm going. So if I wanted to come in, post something on the feed, hey, I need some help. I would go ahead and post that. Someone would see that they can come in tag that as an urgent request, get back to me, really allow me an, a location to come and help and find the information that I'm looking for. As I mentioned, the other thing is really about packages. So when we're sitting here from an API package perspective, I now can come in and say, okay, I don't want to do the request access that I was doing over here for a single one. I want to request it multiples. These API packages and plans allow me to set up API monetization, which would be kind of that future state. So I would come in and say, if I wanna, I wanna come in and I wanna grab this particular set, I see I've got some APIs, I've got different things to subscribe to. Let's go ahead and click subscribe. 
thought on information. Once I do this, it then can happen. It will set it up. It will give me my token. I'll be able to leverage and use all of the APIs inside of this particular package. Ability to communicate directly to a, um, an invoicing system that where you'd be able to invoice directly. All of this is run completely um, on the perspective of the plans, quota-based or consumption-based, however you want it to look. And then the final piece I just wanted to show you real quick is if I go out to the UPS portal. So that was our generic version. You'll see here UPS has gone and taken our generic version and they've specified it with their look and feel. Looks exactly like it would be a UPS. They've taken that box version of the API gallery you saw and they've um, created, um, they're using a, a one of the three or four different options we have. So instead of the boxes, it can be these tabular rows. And then same as if I click on anything, it's going to come in. It's going to show me all the same information. Let me try out the API. Everything's being protected by JWT, so I'd have to make a request for the token. But everything is here. Gives them the ability to allow access. I can come in and click on my account. I do not have account, so it would ask me to register. Once I registered, they would then allow would allow me to give different access to different layers, see all of the different uh, APIs that are available, and move on from there. So those are the three things that I've seen that have been the most successful and where the customers I've been working with have been going. The first, as I said, really leveraging your integration layer to expose all of the data that you need. Once that data has been exposed through APIs, taking those APIs, bringing them to a central location and putting common security models around them so that they can be accessed, you have alerting and you have the ability to um, follow those and make sure that they're um, being used correctly. And once you have those APIs that can be accessed and that they're getting to the data securely, having somewhere where you can promote that data and somewhere that you can advertise what you have. So this is where you're going out and saying to all of the different business units, hey, business unit A created a bunch of APIs and we've put them in a place where only internal folks can see them, but then business unit B takes those and maybe they create some more and now they're exposing them out to everyone. So now you're gonna take that instead of just being an internal portal, you're going to make it an external portal. That's really the, the key is exposing the data, securing the data, and then promoting the access to the data. Once you've done that, you are ready to have an API solution. And then, as I said, the last two pieces are really where I'm looking at um, making sure that my customers are ready for the future. One is being prepared for API monetization. And then the second is being prepared for all of the different things around containers and microservices and such. So let's. The first piece is really API monetization. And the goal here is do I have the ability to take APIs with the current format in which I'm using them, whether it's an API gateway or however they're being called, assign those APIs to a package so that I have a group of APIs or a single API in a package? and then assign different plants to that, be it gold, silver, free, et cetera. So the people can come in quickly and easily, subscribe to a different package, start off possibly with the free and then kind of land and expand. They start to use it, then they get to the point where they are leveraging it more and more and then they want to do some sort of payment for it. I wanna be able to track those. So here's just a, a typical quota setting you would have. So I have got it set up that for this particular quota, I can have a thousand per day. When I reach 80%, I'm going to send out a notification. Typically notifications to be used more if you're going to do say a thousand per week or a thousand per month, you would want to let someone know, hey, you are at your a certain percentage of your quota, send all that information out. As I've set this up, this then, as I've mentioned before, can be hooked up into a invoicing system so that you can generate automatic invoices as you start to go forward. Uh, API monetization is something that is really starting to, to expand now. It's been talked about for several years, but making sure that you have 
a solution that is going to allow you to leverage it when you are ready, I think is key. And then the final piece, and we'll go back to that slide with all the numbers that I started with before, and I will replace the part that I pulled out, which is as APIs are coming about, one of the key things that a lot of the different people um, who are looking at this in our NRS that are really talking about is microservices, Kubernetes, and containers. Why is that? Because of this virtualization, because it's flexibility, it's allowing everyone to be able to manage things as they're coming up and start to talk about, okay, how do I stop being stagnant and forced to be in a single architecture all the time? How can I stop having to always be providing physical hardware for all of my different applications? What they want is to be flexible. They want to be able to bring up little bits of code, microservices, where they need to. They want to be running those inside of containers. They want to have the Kubernetes and service mesh abilities that go on top of all that so that they feel like they have control and flexibility basing on the different form factors um, when you need them. So yes, one of the key areas, as I mentioned, we have everything set up. All of our solutions can be deployed independently. All of our solutions can be deployed inside of all of the different form factors and containers that you're talking about. Really just to think about the fact that as you're looking today, and you may only be looking at um, APIs, but knowing that one of the key things that is coming along and, or that you will probably be looking at in the next several years is how are we going to handle all of these different architectures? All of that is available for you inside of Software AG. The other piece is really the, the, the concept of the gateway and the micro gateway. The API gateway is something that can live and really manages the north south traffic. It can be either in your DMZ, it can be in a private public cloud, or it can be on your on-premise. Really it manages and secures all of your public APIs. The micro gateway, and we'll get a little bit into how it can be leveraged um, with respect to service meshes in a second, but it's a much more um, concept that's going to be distributed in a microservices architecture. It's going to be distributed as a sidecar. It's going to allow you to really manage the distributed concept. So you've got both options and how you can leverage them. The other piece that a lot of customers are looking at, and one of the things that is being talked about in several of the sessions of this particular um, uh, conference is the concept of service meshes and how we're going to start to look at them. If you are a company that is already deep into containers and you're already using Kubernetes and you're using service messages like Istio that are handling all of the, the, the technological communications and understanding where everything is at and how to communicate to it. We have seen, and one of the things that we've providing is something that's called app mesh. And it is a way to really understand what's going on inside your service mesh to be able to make individual services, individual microservices, make them context and business aware without having to recode everything that's in there. It is taking our micro gateway and all of the capabilities that you saw from data transformation, security, everything that, we, that I demonstrated to you in that quick demo of all of the different policies, being able to take all of that and deploying it inside of a service mesh as a sidecar with the ability to leverage that. Um, if you are looking at that today, um, I would suggest reaching out. I'm going to touch here in about two minutes on some of the different mechanisms and way you can communicate and follow up with us. Um, but if you are not, realize that this is where a lot of uh, companies are going as they move into the world of um, containers, Kubernetes, service mesh, et cetera, and that we are there and ready. And this is one of the, the key areas of our solution. I mentioned earlier, the main goal really is when you're looking at web methods, this isn't just about APIs. Um, you'll see here in a minute, we have a very, very well rated API solution 
um, based on the analysts. Um, but APIs is just a part of it. There is B2B, there is NFT, there is iPass, there is the different concepts that are going across everything and anything. How do I pull an IoT? This is really a much larger um, solution and we are looking at a part of it. So from an API perspective, and just to kind of bring you back to the software g.cloud um, solution that I showed you, this is where you can come and do anything you need. This is the ability to come in and have a one-stop shop for all of your APIs, all of your integration needs, all of your B2B, um, as I said, with messaging and MFT coming this year, IoT is extremely important. Having one stop where you can come in, leverage all of this. And at the beginning, I kind of mentioned the fact that data is the key. And I said, getting data out of your systems. The data that you have access to from here is not just the data that's in your systems of record, not just what you can have access to your APIs, also your business, um, your um, B2B trading partner information. All of the different devices you have, whether they're in manufacturing, whether they're in homes and they're doing whatever it is, having that concept where I now have access to all of my data in one location is a very strong um, proponent and component of how you can build out your solution. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, per the latest uh, Forrester Wave, we are uh, ranked as a leader. Uh, there is another one coming out very shortly, may even be out this week. Um, which we will update that with. Um, as kind of a, a, a call to action or next steps, uh, I hope you found this uh, beneficial. There's a, a couple key things that you can do if you really want to kind of continue to follow up. The first is going and uh, signing up for uh, any of our cloud solutions for free. So if you go to softwareag.cloud or to www.softwareag.com slash API, you will have links to all of these different um, pieces of information. The first, you can go out, as I said, get free access to our API gateway, our API portal, our iPass. Any of our cloud solutions have free trials that you will be able to spin up and start to leverage immediately. If you're an organization that is looking to um, kind of go through an API maturity assessment, uh, along with Accenture, we have an API maturity uh, program or questionnaire that you can follow up. Uh, people will work with you, follow up with you, and get you in touch with the right people to have any kind of follow-up uh, demonstrations or conversations that you might have. And then finally, uh, at softwareag.com slash API, we will have a link to all of the different uh, analyst rankings. So the Forrester Waves, the Gartner reports are all there. Uh, with that, um, we are probably a couple minutes early. I'm going to Stop sharing and see if there's any questions or anything in the comment section.